Hello everybody, Smith here. Welcome back to some more BD Armoury and welcome to our little spring challenge where I challenged you, my subscribers, to come up with a fighter that used absolutely no control surfaces whatsoever. In the background you can see a fight between the latest iteration of my Mania, my own attempt at a no control surfaces craft, and my, uh, my Cyclone and... For the first time, the Mania actually legitimately won, like actually out dogfighted the uh, the Cyclone. So, um, yeah, a little bit of progress there, but I wanted to know if you could do any better. Uh, I received 12 submissions for this challenge. Uh, eight would have been really handy, but I suppose 12 isn't the worst number to work with. Uh, and I'm going to split this into two parts, uh, mainly because I thought showing as many fights in detail as possible was uh, better than, you know, just glossing over more of them and just showing the highlights and uh, also because I'm really busy with studying and everything so an extra week where I don't really have to plan a video is kind of a godsend but um, anyway yes I have split the 12 craft up into four groups of three each group is going to go through a, uh, a three fight round robin with the worst craft being eliminated we're just going to go through that quickly and then we're going to move on to some quarter finals and then we'll wrap everything else up in the in the next uh, in the next part so um yeah let's get going for group one then, in the middle we have uh, Actium's deadly looking FASAX-21 and that is flanked on the right by Double Star's X-27 Dragonfly, the first of three vertical takeoff craft in this competition, and on the left by Full Send Gaming's F-37 Lance, an earlier version of which we, uh, we saw on one of my mailbag streams. The first fight threw the X-21 into combat against the X-27 and deadly looking though the X-21 is and it did put up a good fight, sadly it came unstuck mainly due to some poor missile avoidance, the, the X-27 managing a clean sweep. The next fight was more promising for the X-21 as it went into combat against the F-37. A, a much more even fight, a much closer fight, but sadly, after the last remaining X-21 couldn't pull out of a dive in time, the only craft remaining in the air was an F-37 Lance. The final fight of the first group saw the X-27 go up against the F-37 and the F-37 Lance was dispatched with ruthless efficiency, the Dragonflies getting a couple of missile kills before just shredding the last remaining Lance with guns. With no wins then, we have to say goodbye to Actian and his FASA X-21, a beautiful craft that didn't perform too badly in its fights and who knows if that one X-21 had managed to pull out of that dive, things might be very different, but uh, we do have to say goodbye to somebody at this point and sadly it is the X-21. Um, anyway, moving on. Three more craft then. This time we have the Filkler 2RW by Shadow Aerospace in the middle, going heavy on the engines and with that distinctive large reaction wheel around the fuselage. Uh, on the right we have the VFW1 Reaper by Vulcan, a deadly, deadly looking pointy craft. And on the left we have the forward swept wings of the Shoe 6 by Tomaz. Um, there aren't many competitions in which this craft would look uh, conventional by comparison, but uh, <laughs> this is one of them. The first fight saw the Filkler go up against the Reaper and reap it did. The Filkler taken out very, very quickly in a trio of missile kills. It was more promising for the Filkler in the next fight against the Shoe 6 as they did at least manage to close to gun range, but again that stability issue coming back to haunt them, making them sitting ducks for the Shoe 6's guns. Closing out the group we had the Reaper versus the Shoe 6, and the Shoe 6 certainly showed some signs of promise, but sadly those Reapers were just too deadly when it came to gun range. Sadly we need to say goodbye to another craft now, and it is the Filkler 2RW by Shadow Aerospace. A couple of issues to iron out there, and uh, unfortunately it was the Filkler's undoing. Time for our third group then, and in the middle we have Oli Zokt's Thunder Punch F4C, a good looking craft, uh, an interesting little design choice with the downward pointing engine nacelles on the wings. Uh, to its right we have Dayuki's Razor 2, a pointy and deadly looking craft, just the way I like them. And on the left we have Soup's Sorcerer, small, nimble and with minimal wing surface, seems to have been doing very well in this competition so far, so we'll have to see if the Sorcerer can continue that trend. For the first round here, the Thunder Punch went up against the Razor 2, and the Thunder Punch did quite well, managing to get some shots off with its guns, but the Razor 2 was just a better dogfighter and walked away with a trio of gun kills. Round 2 saw the Thunder Punch back in action against the Sorcerer. I had high hopes for the Sorcerer in this one, and it did manage to deal some damage, but in the end I think it was just a little bit too squirrely, and the Thunder Punches walked away with the victory. The third and final round, of course, saw the Razor 2 go up against the Sorcerer. Now the Sorcerer has made the Razors work for it, but in the end, the Razors were just too strong, consigning the Sorcerers to their second defeat. 
Another three fights then, and this time it is Soup's Sorcerer who must sadly sidle away. I think this could be such a deadly craft with a few tweaks, but unfortunately it's just not there at the moment. Our final group arrives then, and leading the charge through the centre is Dion Knows MRJ27 Stab, a good-looking, vaguely A10-esque fighter, and it is surrounded by a couple of vertical takeoff craft. On the right, Serial's Dark and Deadly CF2 Claymare, and on the left, Sky MZ's quite impressive-looking F4 Plus Wing VTOL. The F4 Plus Wing and the MRJ27 were first up, and almost immediately a problem emerged with the F4 Plus Wing, as one of them went into the ground trying to avoid missiles, and another one very nearly followed it. They didn't do badly in the fight that followed, but they were unable to overcome that early disadvantage. The F4 Plus Wing was back in action against the CF2 Claymare, but again that little problem reared its ugly head, as after going one down to a missile kill, the remaining two craft just crashed into the ground of their own accord. All that was left at this point was for the MRJ-27 stab to go up against the CF-2 Claymare, and I learned during this fight that the MRJ-27 has very little roll authority, which really impacted its manoeuvrability and ultimately led to its downfall in this fight. Our group stage done then, and the last craft to be leaving us will be the F4 Plus Wing VTOL by Sky MZ. I like the concept, but there is one pretty serious fatal flaw that is going to have to be worked out for this craft to become competitive. But uh, anyway, yes, we've got uh, we've got some quarterfinals to do. For these, then, I'm going to use a format I've seen used in a lot of real-life tournaments, in that the uh, first place craft in one group is going to place the is going to fight the second place craft from a different group, uh, such that. Two craft that were in the same group together cannot reach each other unless they're both in the finals. Um, for this one, we will see the X-27 Dragonfly, the winner of the first group, go up against the Thunder Punch F4C, the second place craft in the third group. Let's, um, let's get this one going. And so the fight starts. The Thunderbunch F4Cs turn around hard, trying to get their missiles away, which they do so. My word, we've had a lot of interesting craft here. <laughs> haven't, really had a, haven't really had a chance to look through them too closely. I mean, I do like the uh, the downward pointing engine nacelles on the Thunderbunch. Just gives it a little bit more turning power. The X27 Dragonfly. Oh my god, one of them's gone. One of them's gone. That is the first casualty the X27 Dragonflies have had. You can see the wreckage of one of them just falling to the ground there. Okay, that was a shock. I was not expecting that. Missiles coming in, I think. Uh, missiles going out again as well. That looks like some damage done on one of the Thunder Punches. Nothing too hard. Ben Kerman goes in with some guns. I don't think that does any damage, but... Oh, there we go. Couple of hits there. Doesn't look like anything too, uh, too fatal. GT Kerman breaking low. Oh, a missile comes in and hits GT Kerman's craft. Again, I don't think there's any real fatal damage going on. Gunfire raining in. Ah. Yeah, after all the promise the X-27 showed in that first group, I was kind of expecting this to be over by now. One of the Thunder Punches has gone, though. One of the Thunder Punches looks like it fell to a gun kill. Looks like GT Kerman might be going the same way. Indeed he does. The last remaining Thunder Punch, Ghosty Kerman, he's in a spin, he's in a spin. Turns him into a sitting duck. So, after uh, a little bit of a worrying time for the X-27 Dragonflies and Double Star, they are through to the semi-finals. Let's, um, let's go and see who'll be joining them. So the second quarter final sees the winners of our second group, Vulcans VFW1 Reaper, up against the second place team from the fourth group. Um, that is Dion Knows MRJ27 Stab. Let's get this one going. And so our second competition starts. Missiles away from the VFW1 Reapers, the, uh, the MRJ27s will try and get their craft, uh, their missiles away as well, which they do so. It doesn't look like any of the craft are going to have too much problems dodging missiles. Both these craft quite manoeuvrable. The MRJ-27 though has a little bit of an Achilles heel in that regard, in that its roll authority is terrible. It's its pitch authority amazing, but it just it just cannot roll for whatever reason. Adam uh, Adam Kerman having a lot of difficulty trying to get um, trying to get another missile away. 
both craft come around. We've got a little bit of gunfire going on over there. Bardnard and Kerman. Uh, which one was in a bit of trouble? I think... Oh, Ben Kerman makes himself a bit of a sitting duck. The gunfire reigns in. Loses a wing. That is not good news. Yeah. Ben Kerman is out of here. Bardnard and Kerman having a little bit of difficulty straightening out his craft. We'll, might crash into the ground. No, just about saves it. But does have the attention of at least one of those Reapers and... Yep, they do what they did in that uh, in that first fight they were in. Oh my god, the ground comes up, and yeah. Yeah, the MRJ-27 stab. Oh, the sound's gone. And back it comes. The MRJ-27 stab, just that little problem with it, so with its role authority. But yeah, the Reaper's very impressive once again, and uh, through to our semi-finals. I think we're probably getting the hang of this now. Uh, the uh, winner of the third group, Dayuki's Razor 2, will now go up against Full Sail Gaming's F37 Lance, the second place craft in our first group. Let's um, let's get them up into the air. And the fight starts. The razors are around quickly. No missile lock. Yep, there it goes. Away with one of their Amrams, and Ghosty Kerman gets a second one away. The Lances, the Lances have not managed to get around, I don't think. In fact, Steak Kerman have a little bit of trouble avoiding that terrain. That's the problem with some of these craft, which are more reliant on uh, on thrust vectoring than they are the reaction wheels. Yeah, when the thrust is low, they can't really turn that hard. I think, yeah, there's a couple of craft where that's kind of weakness, and the uh, the F-37 Lance is certainly one of them. The uh, the Royal Authority seems to be good, though, so that's an improvement on um, an improvement on the MRJ-27 and the like, at least. How are we doing? Um, have any of the F, uh, F-37s managed to get their missiles away? It, do any of them have missiles? Yes, they are equipped with, a, uh, with some Sidewinders. Interestingly, the F-37 Lance, the uh, only craft I could actually find any kind of rules violation on. Oh my god! And Lega Lackerman's craft is shredded. Yes, uh, there was uh, there's some rear wood, some rear backwards facing air intakes. You're not supposed to uh, clip together air intakes in place, so I had to go and um, make an adjustment there. Steak Kerman, oh my god, getting it very low into the water. Ah. Yeah, I just had to go place them somewhere else, and it looks like, it looks like that's Legolat Kerman. Ion Kerman, the last remaining healthy F-37A Lance. Yeah, I just had to put them somewhere else. I hasn't really made a huge difference to the craft, I don't think. Is it not going to get away? Yep, uh, one am sorry, one Sidewinder away. Could this be the comeback? Could be this be the mother of all upsets? I very much doubt it. Oh, Ion Kerman, going for guns. Going for guns, and there's the uh, there's another sidewinder. The uh, the uh, the razor's very quick though to turn around to try and line up guns on uh, on Ion Kerman, and this is not looking good. Really not looking good. <laughs> loses an engine, loses a lot more. Still going, still just about going. Oh, more gunfire. Oh, that's not good news. And Ion Kerman is just shredded. A convincing victory in the end for the uh, for the Razor 2 by Dayuki. So um, we have just one last place in our semi-finals to fill. So who will fill that final spot? Will it be our Group 4 winners, Serials CF2 Claimer, or will it be our Group 2 runners-up, Tomaz's Shoe 6? Let's uh, let's find out. Our last quarterfinal starts. Adam Kerman is relatively quickly around, although missiles are already incoming. Uh, yes, gets a, gets an Amram away now. Will he get a second one away? I think this might be the most evenly matched of the quarterfinals so far. The Shoe Six. I don't think it's got any sort of standout problems like some of the other ones have. Is that debris or is that just missiles missing? I think that's just missiles missing. No standout flaws like uh, like some of the other craft, like the uh, the MRJ-27 with its inability to roll. Um, yeah. I'm expecting a close call. I would put my money on the Claymare if I uh, if I had to choose, but we'll have to see. I think it's uh, I think it's when these two craft get up close and personal that uh, it's really going to tell. Ghosty Kerman coming around, loses a Sidewinder. Let's see if the Claymare can dodge that. Yep, countermeasures make that no problem. 
Ghosty Kermit now trying to line up one with his guns. A, a missile comes very close. Turns around. They're in amongst each other now. It's, uh, oh, I was about to say, it's uh, it's gun range. But no, Ghosty Kermit goes for a sidewinder. It's sort of that lovely sidewinder kill different distance, if you can actually make it work. Trying to train guns onto that claymare, but no. Drifts across, doing a little bit of a spin. Not too much, um, not too much wing surface on really any beast craft that are left. Oh my god, something's going on there. Ghosty Kerman is... just shreds one of the claymares. The claymares are in a bit of trouble now. Adam Kerman comes around. He has the missiles. Can he get one away? No. Ah, it's got the missiles coming in for him. Pops some countermeasures. Guns. Ah, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I was not expecting this. If he can, uh, if he can turn around, if he can actually uh, make a bit of extra maneuverability count, I do think the claimers have a little bit of a uh, little bit of a maneuverability and stability advantage just with all those uh, all those reaction wheels. But ah, uh, yeah, a little bit unsteady actually. Guns coming in, guns coming in. Is that from uh, from two of the shoe six? Well, one of them's gone. This is Adam Coleman is the last CF two claimer. The other one has gone. The sound bug has kicked in, which is kind of irritating, but now there are three shoe sixes gunning for Adam Kerman. Well, this is a bit of an upset. Uh, as I said, I think the shoe six was the most competitive of all the second place craft, so I'm not too surprised, but yeah, here come the bullets. Oh dear, Adam Kerman, I'm not sure you're getting out of this one. Tries to turn around, tries to uh, come around and get guns onto the, uh, the pack. The pack of shoe sixes that are hunting him down. But it is not looking too good. Break slow. Trying to make some evasive manoeuvres. Yeah, I don't think the other. Uh, don't think the claimer actually has any gun uh, wing surface whatsoever, which means it can't really pull those hard aerodynamic manoeuvres. But um, just relying on sort of thrust and uh, thrust and angle. Shortle comes around. Can't quite pull it all the way around. Does so almost, almost as if to bring guns to bear on those chasing shoe sixes. But uh, no, the uh, the bullets come in and uh, finish the job first. Okay, so we do at least get one upset, sort of, in our quarterfinals. And our semi-finals, which will be the X-27 versus the VFW-1 and the Razor 2 versus the Shoe 6, will happen next week. Well, <laughs> next week, assuming we're able to get a, a video out and nothing, uh, nothing goes wrong, but... My huge thanks to everybody who sent in a craft, to Action, to Double Star, Full Send Gaming, Shadow Aerospace, Vulcan, Tomaz, Olizok, Deuki, Soup, uh, SkyMZ, Dion, No, and Serial. My commiserations to those who didn't make it this far. Um, yes, my thanks to you for watching. If you have enjoyed it uh, and you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, uh, following me on Twitter, maybe getting involved with the Discord, Great BD Armory and KSP community on there and more besides. Uh, all those links in the, in the description, as are links to the PayPal and the Patreon if you want to help support the channel. Uh, you too can get your own little patron Kerbal, like Ghosty Kerman down here, uh, access to... Um, Access to the patron-only uh, section of the Discord. You name at the end of the videos. Uh, regular updates. <laughs> I swear they're going to become more regular. I swear it. Um, but yes, that will be all for now. We have uh, we have our four finalists. Let's uh, let's see what happens next time. But uh, until then, thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time.